Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to calculate the volume of a frustum. Now this tutorial will require some prior knowledge on being able to calculate the volume of a cone, knowledge on similar shapes and using the formula for density which is mass divided by volume. But before we start let's have a look at the definition. Well a frustum is a part of a solid shape for example a pyramid that is between the base of the shape and a parallel plane through the shape. But what does that mean? Well, let's look at a cone as an example. Here I'm going to show you a plane. Think of a plane like a three-dimensional line. As you can see, the plane is always parallel to the base of our cone. Now, as I cut and remove the top of our cone, I'm left with a frustum. And this is the shape that's made from the base of the cone to the plane. Therefore, the formula to work out the volume of a frustum makes logical sense. It's simply the volume of our larger pyramid subtract the volume of our smaller pyramid. This can be said for any type of frustum, as they are made from pyramids. So, our formula is very simple. It is the volume of our larger pyramid subtract the volume of our smaller pyramid. It's really important to note that our knowledge on similar shapes is paramount when calculating the volume of our pyramids. So, now we understand the formula, let's start by working out the volume of some frustrums starting with a cone and applying it to a past exam question. Here we're given a frustum and it's made by removing a small cone from a larger cone. The height of the small cone is 20 centimetres and the height of the larger cone is 40 centimetres. We know the diameter of the base of the large cone is 30 centimetres and we're asked to work out the volume of the frustum giving our answer to three significant figures. Now, given we know the formula for the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared times the perpendicular height and we also know to work out the volume of a frustum it's the larger volume subtract the smaller volume See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. We know to work out the volume of a frustum, it's simply the volume of the larger cone subtract the volume of the smaller cone. So let's work out the volumes of our two separate cones. Looking at our larger cone and referring to our formula, we need to identify our radius and our height. So, for our larger cone, we know the height is 40 centimetres. We also know the radius of our larger cone is 15 centimetres. Now, let's have a look at the dimensions for our smaller cone. Well, we know the height of our smaller cone is 20 centimetres, but we do not know the radius of our smaller cone, but we know these shapes are similar, so we can identify our scale factor. If we know the height of our larger cone is 40 centimetres and the height of our smaller cone is 20 centimetres, therefore we know the scale factor is a half. Therefore, if we know the radius of our larger cone is 15 centimetres, we know the radius of our smaller cone is 7.5 centimetres. From here, we simply substitute into our formula. Well, the volume of a frustum is the volume of the larger cone subtract the volume of the smaller cone. Substituting what we know, a third times pi times 15 squared times 40, subtract our third times pi times 7.5 squared times 20, gives us our volume of our frustum to be 8,246.68, so on and so forth. Given the question wanted us to round to three significant figures, we're looking at our four and rounding it to 8,250 centimetres cubed to three significant figures. Now let's have a look at a slightly harder question. Here the diagram shows the frustum of a cone. The diameter of the base is 48 centimetres and the diameter of the top is 16 centimetres. We know the perpendicular height of the frustum is 20 centimetres. 
we're asked to work out the volume of our frustum to the nearest centimetres cubed. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Sometimes in an exam it's helpful to draw the cone just to help with the visualisation. Now we know to work out the volume of a frustum, it's simply the volume of the larger cone subtract the volume of the smaller cone. So let's identify our dimensions for each. Well, let's start with our larger cone. We know the radius is 24 centimetres. And looking at our second smaller cone, we know the radius is 8 centimetres. Therefore, we can identify our scale factor quite easily. The scale factor must be a third because a third of 24 gives us 8. Unfortunately, we don't know the height of either the larger cone or the smaller cone. So, let's see if we can use our knowledge on the height of the frustrum. Well, let's label the height of the smaller cone to be h. Therefore, we know the height of the larger cone must be 3h, given what we know about the scale factor. To work out the height of the frustrum, we know it must be 3h subtract h, which gives us our 2h. Therefore, we know 2h, the height of our frustrum, is 20 centimetres. We've now formed an equation, so we can identify the height or the value of h to be 10 centimetres. Now we know h to be 10 centimetres, we can work out the height of our larger cone to be 30 centimetres. Now we have enough information to apply it to our formula. Substituting our values in, we now have a third times pi times 24 squared times 30. Subtract our third times pi times 8 squared times 10. Giving us an answer of 17,425.36725, so on and so forth. Given the question wanted us to round to the nearest centimetres cubed, therefore our answer is 17,425 centimetres cubed. Now let's have a look at a slightly harder question, referring back to our required skills. Here the question states that we have a frustrum, and it's simply made by removing a smaller cone from a larger cone shown in the diagram. The frustrum is made of glass. The glass has a density of 2.5 grams per centimetres cubed. We're asked to work out the mass of the frustum to four significant figures. See if you can give it a go, referring to our required skills and our knowledge on density, and press pause if you need. So let's apply our formula. Well, we know to work out the volume of a frustum, it's the volume of the larger cone subtract the volume of the smaller cone. So let's identify our dimensions of each cone. Well, for the larger cone, you can see we have a height of 15 centimetres. We also have a radius of 6 centimetres. For the height of our smaller cone, well, you can see we've got a height of 5 centimetres because if we know this is 15 centimetres and this is 10 centimetres, therefore we know the height to be 5 centimetres. We don't know the radius of our smaller cone, but we can identify our scale factor given our heights. We can see the scale factor must be one third, so therefore the radius of our smaller cone must be 2 centimetres. Now we can apply our formula. Well, to work out the volume, it's simply the volume of the larger cone, subtract the volume of the smaller cone. Substituting what we know, a third times pi times 6 squared times 15, subtract a third times pi times 2 squared times 5, we know the volume of our frustum is 520 over 3 pi centimetres cubed. But the question wanted us to work out the mass. So we need to rearrange our formula for density to work out the mass. Rearranging this gives us the formula for mass to be density multiplied by volume. 
Well, we know the density to be 2.5, and we know our volume is 520 over 3 pi. So therefore, the mass of our frustum to four significant figures is 1,361 grams. Now let's have a look at our last exam question. Here the question gives us a pyramid with a square base of 10 centimetres and a height of 30 centimetres. We're given the formula to find a volume of a pyramid to be a third times the area of the base times the vertical height. And we're asked to find the volume of this frustum. Now we know to work out the volume of any frustum, it's the volume of the larger pyramid subtract the volume of our smaller pyramid. And that will give us the volume of any frustum. It's clear we're not given a cone, but we are given the formula to work out the volume of any pyramid. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. We still have a frustum so we still know the formula applies. We just simply need to substitute the formula that we're given from the question. Well, the formula states it's a third times the area of the base times the vertical height. Given the base is a square, we know it's a third times the length squared times the height for our larger pyramid, subtract a third times the base squared times the height for our smaller pyramid. Therefore, let's pull out our dimensions for our larger pyramid and our smaller pyramid. Well, we know the height of our larger pyramid is 30 centimetres. We also know the length of our larger pyramid is 10 centimetres. Given the fact that we know the height of our larger pyramid is 30 centimetres and the frustum is 15 centimetres, therefore we know the height of our smaller pyramid must be 15 centimetres. From here, it's clear that our scale factor must be one half. So, the base of our smaller pyramid must be 5 centimetres. Substituting this into our formulas, we know it's a third times our 10 squared times 30, subtract a third times 5 squared times 15. From here, we can work out the volume of our frustum to be 875 centimetres cubed. So, in summary, we've gone through the definition of a frustum, we know to find the volume of a frustum, it's simply the volume of the larger pyramid, subtract the volume of the smaller pyramid. And this tutorial has also required some prior knowledge on volume of a cone, similar shapes and density. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.